Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. I know that you are super excited though about our next segment because that's right, we're doing a top 10. This time it is going to be the top 10 Christmas songs my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're going to be, Laura and I are going to be doing our top 10 Christmas songs. So let's go to the top 10. Dick's top 10. All right. So the way that this works, we didn't do it the way that we normally do a top 10 here at Tactics when there's more than one of us. So uh, Laura and I are just going to alternate. And, uh, you know, because there's so many Christmas songs out there, we probably didn't hit very many of the same ones. So we're we didn't just, hit any of the same ones. <laughs> I don't think we did. Uh, I, I haven't seen your list, so I don't actually know. So we'll go ahead and get started with number 10. Number 10. All right, so number 10 on my list is the 12 Redneck Days of Christmas. I'll agree that that one is a great song. That is a good song. It was hilarious. And I love that song so much that ever since it came out when I was, I don't know, a teenager, I think, um, I can still do all 12 from memory. <laughs> 12, pack of Bud, 11, wrestling tickets, 10, a Copenhagen, 9, years probation, 8, table dancer, 7, packs of Redman, 6, Kansas Spam, 5, flannel shirts, 4, big mud tires, 3, shock and shells, 2, hunting dogs, and some parts to a Mustang GT. <laughs> there you go. So, That's impressive. Thank That's you. Impressive. Yes. I, I can't even remember that. all the words to that. <laughs> and I used to have to listen to it 20 million times a day with my brothers. I had a feeling you're, right. that, that seems like right up your brother's alley. That is completely up his alley. It's his favorite. Yeah. That and uh, Grandpa got run over by a beer truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one, too. That sounds like, yeah. All right, so what's your number 10? Sleigh Ride. I, you know, and like the mute, the instrumental version of it. Like, I think it's so well done musically and... Of course, you add in actual sleigh bells, and then, uh, I, I don't know. I love anything that I've ever played as a musician, and mm -hmm. that one's so fun for me to play. I like it. I'm sure it's a good song, but I've never heard it before, so I can't comment. How do you not heard Sleigh Ride? Uh. Everybody has heard Sleigh Ride. Well, maybe I've heard it, and I just don't know it, but, you know, that's okay. We'll go on to number nine. We're going to have this conversation. Number nine. All right, so my number nine is, an, uh, a, I think, one of the prettiest songs that you'll ever hear, and it really doesn't have as much to do with the music or even the lyrics. It's just the singer. Pretty Paper by Randy Travis. I've never heard it. Really? Yeah. Well, you can't get mad at me for not hearing, have, not, not having heard no, the last No, no, mine's there. a classic. The other is Randy Travis. <laughs> Randy Travis is a classic. He is not. Not like Sleigh Ride. <laughs> I disagree, but anyway, <laughs> I'm not even a huge fan of the lyrics in that song. I mean, it's it's got good music, and it's not got bad lyrics, but I mean, like, Randy Travis just has a fantastic voice, and he kills it in that song, so that's that's my number nine. What about yours? Uh, Christmas Time's a-coming, because I grew up on bluegrass, and... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I like that Yeah, you're a Tennessee a girl, that makes I, sense. I am a Tennessee girl. My dad was in the bluegrass band. My brothers played guitar and banjo and all of that, and... Mm -hmm. All right, so I grew up hearing things like Christmas time is come, Christmas times are coming, and I loved it. Okay, I still love it. <laughs> Great pick. Let's go on to number eight. Number eight. All right, and number eight on my list, it's another funny one. Drunk on Christmas. Okay, that was good. By John Rich. I'll give points there. Okay, so you have heard this I one. I have heard that one. Okay, so usually when I say this, people have no idea what I'm talking about, but I love John Rich. I've always been a bi a huge Big and Rich fan. Yeah. yeah. I I listened to Big and Rich when I was a teenager. Right. I do know them. Yeah. But I've heard that one. Yeah, Drunk on Christmas is really funny. I think it's the funniest Christmas song ever, in my opinion. So if we're doing comedy, like, that would be my number one. Really? Have you heard, like, Jingle Bombs, though? Because that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it's not funny. I just don't think it's funny as Drunk on Christmas. Yeah. What's your number eight? Uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas, which has a whole new level of significance for me now. Mm -hmm. You know, living Is there any particular here. version or just in general that song? Uh, no, just in general that song. I don't like anything modern. There, any modern version of it, I'm probably going to hate it. Okay, fair enough. That's just my general rule for everything, though. See, that'll be useful going forward. We'll know that you just don't like that. So yeah. let's go on to number seven. 
Number seven. And number seven on my list is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Yeah, okay, that is a great version of that song, mm-hmm. though. And I was going to say specifically the Jackson 5 version. I love that. Yeah, that is a really good one. I mean, like, the other one can be pretty, eh, but that one is awesome. <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen The Longest Yard? No. I have. Oh, well, Ma- Matt, maybe you'll get I this know. one. I like little Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been a long time, but that yeah, I'm, I'm remembering that. That was good. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Michael Jackson's later stuff too, but like that Christmas album with the Jackson Five, and that's the best one on there. Like oh, that's that's great. a fantastic album, but that's the best song on it. So good, yeah. I listen to that one every year too. Yeah. Well, what what's yours for uh, number seven? So I feel like mine are so lame compared to yours because I'm like such a classic nerd. But um, yeah, anything from the Nutcracker Suite. That's just, I'm lumping that all together because I love them equally. But again, I love anything that I've played. Did you before. really just use an entire ballet because in one slot? It's slash. so good. Yeah. It's so good. Because I've played the entire ballet. So I can honestly tell you that I've played the entire music from it. And mm-hmm. I, you know, have a, ma- a mad respect for it in that sense because I know how to listen for all the parts and it gives me more appreciation of it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're just listening to it, I can see why people would be maybe a little bored. Yeah, I think, especially with the Nutcracker, the reason that it's just hard for people to, women to get their guys to go out and see it is because it's called the Nutcracker. I mean, I feel like that's fair. Um, my dog is a little bit more appreciative, given he has no nuts. But right. Like... <laughs> Poor Eddie. And, yeah. by the way, if anybody out there is upset that I just use sixth grade humor, dude, you knew what you were getting into when you started watching this Why show. Why are you even watching this show? <laughs> You're in the wrong place, my friend. We've been probably cracking sixth grade level <laughs> jokes all night. Yeah. All right, let's move on to number six. Number six. Number six for me is one that I feel like is very controversial because there's people that love it and people that hate it, but I love it personally. And it might have something to do with I just really like the artist that wrote it, Wonderful Christmas Time. And that's the one that's like, simply having okay, yeah. a wonderful Christmas time. How do you know that one and not Sleigh Ride? Paul McCartney. He's a Beatle, Laura. I, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. It's a good one. I actually do like that one. Yeah. No, well, I'm, I'm glad you approve. Yeah. yeah. And, and guys, Laura's tough on me when it comes to musical selection. Oh, all the time, yeah. And in fact, this is why this whole scene, like, this whole thing is hilarious is because, like, every year it's an argument over when you start <laughs> listening to Christmas music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Right, but we're in December, so it's safe for both of us. It happens year-round at our house. <laughs> in November. <laughs> Matt, November. you know, I, I don't think I've ever told you how much I appreciate and admire you. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many a man who could put up with this. You, you know... You, Laura loves all things Christmas. She, you know, Christmas in our house starts at uh, October 31st not at, at midnight, you know, when it goes to November 1st. Um, one thing, look, I, I'm still a rookie when it comes to being married, um, but it seems to me that when it comes to choosing your battles, if your wife is really passionate about something and you're kind of indifferent, let her do what she wants. You know, that's not the time to throw down. <laughs> See, because you're on tactics. It's not just debate tactics. It's also tactics for dealing with your wife. Real story. Yep. So. This year I was pregnant, and he was like, yes, baby, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear, have some more chocolate, dear. These are all very safe tactics if you're not sure what to do. Good advice. Good Accurate. advice. <laughs> all right, Laura, you're number six. Um, Christmas Waltz. And I think the Partridge Family is my favorite version of that. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I like that one a lot. Um, I, I don't know that as well, but I have heard it. So, yeah, and the Partridge yeah. family is just great. Like, they're, I mean, they're a name in and of themselves. They're just fantastic. So, I was really I'd more of a, the 70s. I was really more of a bewitched kind of person, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to number five. Number five. Five Christmas songs. All right, so my number five is Holly Jolly Christmas. Yeah. Okay. And and I like this song in any of its forms. I like the original and the, like, the claymation, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But That's I it. think the best version, in my opinion, is Alan Jackson. Okay, I like Alan Jackson as an artist. Mm. I really do. I think he's fantastic. I did enjoy his Bluegrass album. It's actually pretty good. Yep. But I don't know that I would agree with him on this one. Okay. On that one. But I like Holly Dolly Christmas. I just think Alan Jackson's maybe not the right person to sing that one. <laughs> okay. I I mean that's that's fair. That's your opinion. 
I just like to keep my Alan Jackson and my Christmas music separate. Mm. See, I mean, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm not. So there you go. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like there's some things that should be kept separate and apart. <laughs> <laughs> Working in some Church of Christ humor. Ah! All our Baptist viewers that just went right over their heads. They had no idea what that was about. Can we have Church of Christ humor at Christmas time? <laughs> I don't know if that's okay. Wait a second. <laughs> it's mixing. <laughs> Christmas humor and Church of Christ must be kept separate. <laughs> separate apart. <laughs> Played. Hashtag no Christmas here. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're cool with it. We're good. We're good. Yeah, it's really not an issue for us. All right. We Laura, don't write jokes about it. Right. Laura, what, what was your number five? Uh, Christmas Canon. I think Trans-Siberian Orchestra did the best version of that to me. Mm -hmm. And I love Trans-Siberian Orchestra. If you don't know them, they're like a rock orchestra type and they're stinking awesome but the christmas candidate is awesome you know i specifically didn't include any trans-siberian orchestra on my list because they're instrumental only and i don't know why but just they have some vocals like christmas canon is vocal oh well, i didn't realize that mm -hmm. but i will say i love trans-siberian orchestra they're so good um like mad russian and uh what's the other one holly or something like that yeah but, I mean, all their stuff is like medleys and remixes, mm -hmm. but it's really good. They're very talented. Dude, they're, they're, like the, so awesome. they're like the ELO of Christmas music. Yeah, and they're doing a, uh, like a live show that you can stream from your home like this Friday, and I am beyond excited. Oh, that is cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that is right up your alley, too. It's my fave. <laughs> Christmas special, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Christmas, Laura. Yeah, Laura's here. <laughs> it's like all the Laura things. <laughs> yep. It's like that time they did the Oscars, and the Oscar winner was a movie about like a, a gay black director. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's like, like well, all the Oscar things. <laughs> <You're right on. laughs> all right, let's move on to number four. Number four. All right, number four on my list is one by my favorite band of all time, and. This is just a really good song. It's an original one by them. Please Come Home for Christmas by the Eagles. Okay, that is actually really good. It's a really good song, I especially like the way. intro. I don't know what it is about the Eagles. I mean, all their music is good, and their songs are good from start to finish, but, like, they just nail every single intro. Yeah. Like, Already Gone and Life in the Fast Lane, those are two of the best rock intros of all time. Uh, but, yeah. but this one in particular, that um, bells will be ringing. Oh, that's so good. It's well done. And, like, I mean, the Eagles are awesome. I mean, they're very few. I don't like rock. I love classic rock. Mm -hmm. And the Eagles are the epitome of awesome classic rock. And they oh, nailed yeah. that song. So <laughs> I'll give a lot of points there. Oh, for sure. I love, mm -hmm. I love that song. It's just got great instrumentals, great. I mean, it's the Eagles. Great instrumentals, great vocals. There's really nothing to complain about. Such a good song. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Laura, what's your number four? Uh, I think my number four would be the Christmas Festival song done by the po the Boston Pops. Um, I love the Boston Pops, and mm -hmm. they did the it's a medley, but they just did it so well. And like I just love anything with strong brass parts, like low brass coming out, the French horns, because I'm used to be a French horn player, so I'm biased. Makes sense. But like, oh, it's good. I can listen to that over and over again. <laughs> So you could say that you're a big brass fan. I'm a big brass fan. <laughs> We're back to the sixth grade here. Basically, yeah. Again, this is just us. What, you knew this. Yes. No no one should be upset at us because you knew what you were getting when you bought the ticket. You watched this show. <laughs> All right, let's go to number three. Number three. Number three on my list is Silver Bells. And there are several good versions of this song. I like this song just, you know, because it's this song. And so I'll, I'll enjoy any version of it. I think Elvis Presley has the best version. As a native of West Tennessee, <laughs> I, can't, I can't argue that. My question is, have you heard the Richard Nixon version of Silver Bells? What the? <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. And his, his dad does it every year at Christmas, and it's my favorite. My, my, my father, he, he loves doing voices, in, uh, pre, voices of presidents. And somehow, I, I don't know whether he heard this from somebody like Richard Little or whether he came up with it himself, but dad decided to sing Silver Bells in the Richard Nixon voice, and it cracks me up every year. I mean, I, it I comes on, and he's just automatically going into it. Yeah. Silver I, bells, <laughs> silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. You know? <laughs> Every <laughs> <like> time. <that. laughs> 
got the peace signs going and everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like take Richard Little's, you know, parodies of uh, of Nixon and you know one up him a little bit. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of what he does. So funny. But yeah, I agree. I mean, Silver Bells with Elvis. I mean, you can't go wrong with Elvis. No, Elvis I, does it. It's probably amazing. J- just about anything that Elvis does is fantastic. But oh, yeah. but yeah, Matt, I'm gonna have to get your dad to do that at some point. We can we can make that 100%. happen absolutely. And and our kid is gonna grow up, you know, screwed up because he's gonna grow up hearing <laughs> his grandfather singing that. He's gonna think it's normal. And uh, like even what even is? He's this? gonna think that's the version of Silver Bells yes. you're supposed to sing. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, that's not good. God bless you, kid. <laughs> You're going to need some help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Laura, what was your uh, number four? Or, sorry, number three. Uh, so, Dominic the Italian Christmas Donkey. Okay, you've lost me on this <laughs> one. <I have> no <laughs> idea. It's real. Dean Martin does it. And I think it's like an Italian classic. But, yeah, it's awesomely hilarious. Like, it cracks I... me up every time. I mean, it may be really good, and I just never heard of it. But that's like meant to be serious. That like, that threw funny. me for a loop. So yeah. <laughs> it's great. Heard it for the first time a couple of years ago. It's like one of my favorites every year. All right. Well, let's. Uh, I don't even know how to recover from that. There's not a way to recover. Right. From let's that. just go to number. <laughs> let's just go to number two. Number two. Now, my number two is kind of like my number three in the sense that I like every version that I've heard of it. I just like the song itself, and there's lots of different versions that I enjoy listening to. But uh, Carol of the Bells. Yeah, that's good. Love Carol of the Bells. I love the Pentatonix version. They do a really good rendition. You didn't like that one. I don't like the Pentatonix. Okay. I think a better version is the one that it was a string quartet. I want to say it was the piano guys maybe that did that one. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a good one. Theirs is really, really good. That may be my favorite one. Uh, there's Ding Fries Are Done. That's, <laughs> that's good, too. Good one. Who did that? It was a family guy. Well, they they actually copied the the original video. They just did a oh, parody really? of a, of the parody. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but they did do a, a version of Ding Fries Are Done. And it what's funny is Burger King this year actually did a commercial with the <laughs> Ding Fries. Are, yeah, they did. So they just decided to steer into the skid like 11 years after it happened. So. I mean, take a head on. It was I, great. I don't know why you wouldn't, but I mean, it's all joking very... aside, Carol of the Bells, it's an incredibly versatile Christmas carol. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, it's just musically complicated, and that's one of the things I like about it. The instrumentals in it are really good, regardless of who's doing it. Yeah. Mm. And so I just love that song. You can do, you can have it with lyrics, you can have it without lyrics, and do just instrumental. It's it's one of the best songs, regardless of what form it takes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, anything. I mean, and Carol of the Bells is actually kind of a canon musically, mm-hmm. and so that I love a good canon because canons, when done properly, have a beautiful chord structure. And they, I mean, Carol the Bells is just a great example of that. And I love Cannons because it's how we beat General Cornwallis and won our liberty. That's why I like Cannons. (laughs) My mom went there too. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Matt, it's just because you guys are like infantile. (laughs) Being a man, I was about to say it's. Yeah, it's it's just because we're guys and we love America. What's wrong with you, Laura? Unbathed heathens, <laughs> Philistines, a lot of you. We're men. We like seeing stuff blow up. What can we say? It's true. It's true. I tried so hard to bring you culture. <laughs> <laughs> Can't drive out the, t- the testosterone. It's just it's not going anywhere. All right. What's your number two, Laura? Um, oh, Holy Night. I like every version except for the Mariah Carey version. I know this was popular. I think it's stupid. I don't. I've probably heard the Mariah Carey version at some point, but I've not listened to it enough to know it, know the different versions. So it's just no, it's just no. But like, okay, the song itself is very good. And you know, disclaimer: I don't believe Jesus was born on December twenty fifth. I think any you know belief to the contrary is a little bit not based on anything. But you know, I think. Uh, well, we just lost our sponsors, but whatever. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> But I think, you know, A Holy Night is a good song. It was well done. Okay. I love right. it a lot. It's one of my favorites. I feel you. All right. And uh, let us go to the big one, number one. And number one. Just that version I love. All right. And number one on our list, on my list, is Christmas and Dixie. I think you could do better. No. Christmas in Dixie, Alabama, and I'm not picking it because it's Alabama, but the fact that they're from, and, and the song actually ends with, and from Fort Payne, Alabama. Oh, my 
Merry Christmas tonight. I love Christmas in Dixie. It's such a good song. I mean, it's good. Just, I don't know. You are not enthused about my number one pick. No, I'm not. You know, you, you've been very good to me this entire list, and mm. you just waited till number one to crap on my selection. It's like you, you expected anything else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what, Matt? That's a good point. I really couldn't be surprised. I don't know why I am. Yeah. You got a good point there. All right, so. All right, Laura, what's your number one, who I'm sure is going to be so much better than Christmas and Dixie? It really is, though. No, it's like, not. It's great. <laughs> it's I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, and I like... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, it's so dumb, guys. No, it's great. Uh, I like any version that isn't the stupid one that came out recently. Who did that? Was it Casting Crowns? That was uh, awful. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. It was awful. It was a disgrace to all music everywhere, and frankly, they should burn themselves. <laughs> Just go ahead and throw themselves in the fire. Dang. That's how I feel about it. But the song wow. itself the views is amazing. Views of my wife do not necessarily reflect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's real though, and like I, you're I, such I, a I lawyer. Last year, but like, um, but yeah, okay. So it has beautiful lyrics, like, and peals the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. And it's just, I mean, it's gorgeous. It just, if it doesn't like give you chills as you're listening to it, then like, where's your heart? See, I feel that way about Christmas and Dixie, but whatever. Whatever, you just try, quit trying to save face. You know it's not as good. <laughs> well, guys, no, I know it's better. <laughs> See, guys, well, you know, I think you guys are both missing the big point here, which is you should feel this strongly about the song Christmas Shoes. That's, no. <laughs> just go. I'm just messing with her. <laughs> I'll deal with you at home. <laughs> See, that's the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I don't want to know about. <laughs> Although I'm not a big fan of the Christmas shoes song. It's, it's a, not yeah. bad. How is that even a Christmas song? It's not okay. It's not okay. It's more of a Christmas song than Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I can agree with that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I actually... I they're both stupid. No, nah, I just... I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to get off on a tangent here. <laughs> but it ticks me off that they try to sh they try to like disguise the Harry Potter movies as Christmas movies because they have one Christmas scene in all of them. Yeah, and like the fact there's snow and like Hedwig, like no, it's, it's not a, it's not a Christmas movie. Right. I've heard the yeah. argument that that uh, Die Hard is really more of a Harry Potter movie than a Christmas movie because they're running around a tower at night trying to fight Alan Rickman. You know, so it's it's more of a Harry. That's Potter That's a good movie. point. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. I don't okay, know why thanks. I never thought of that. <laughs> I don't know. On on my like perspective, though, another one that's really funny is when it first came out, they kept playing Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah. Is it just snow? It, snow but, is yeah. all that you need for but Christmas. It, but it does have that one Christmas scene. Yeah, it was a like, Santa shows up. <laughs> right. Father Christmas gives Peter his sword and shield and mm. uh, Lucy her dagger and her vial and then Susan her bow and her horn. It's mm. like one scene. Right, it's like one scene, which is why I didn't really thought it was qualified as a Christmas movie. And then, like a couple years later, when Prince Caspian came out, they were putting that one in at the same time, and I'm like, okay, yeah, guys, like the first one was a stretch. This one just straight up isn't a Christmas movie. Yeah. Nope, no, no, no. There's not even a snowflake in that entire film. Yeah. Nope. But anyway, I don't, know, I don't know. Some people just try to stretch it to to do that. I don't know why, but they do. Anyway, so that's our big Christmas top ten. Fire off in the comments whether you thought we were right or, or whether we were wrong. I mean, he's totally wrong. No, I'm totally right. And I think that the uh, the people of Alabama will agree with me that Alabama has the better Christmas song. Alabama's great, but it's not better than I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I'll what? give it a solid number ten. Well, I didn't hear the bells on Christmas Day, so there. That's true. We don't have snow here. That's right. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not even a thing. But you know what we do have? Christmas in Dixie because of Alabama. Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?